All right, Matt Malk, former national championship winning quarterback, here with us every Monday morning on Off the Bench. Good morning, Matt. How are you, man? Uh, good. How are you guys doing? Doing good. LSU goes into uh, into Florida on Saturday, falls to the uh, to the Gators. First loss of the season. Tigers now 5-1 and one coming back home against a Georgia team ranked number two in the country in both polls. Before we start to look ahead to what the environment, what the, uh, the game is going to look like this Saturday, what were your thoughts on the Tigers falling to, uh, to Florida last, last time out? Uh, you know, I think, you know, retired or whatever they did with Tim Tebow and then uh, just a tough place to play. You know, I thought we actually did pretty well. Um, you know, we had a chance to win that game. Uh, just, uh, you know, hated the way it ended. Um, I thought for the most part we, we, we played pretty well. Um, one thing I was kind of disappointed in is uh, we just we seemed to have gotten such a better pass rush uh, in the previous games and, and just didn't feel like we had very much pressure um, on them. So other than that, though, I thought we, I thought we looked good. From an offensive standpoint, LSU's offensive standpoint, they gave up five sacks. Um, as as a, a play caller or somebody as a quarterback who's going out there and executing the play calls, um, what's the best way to remedy that? Uh, you know, I, I think that run the ball uh, is one thing. Uh, use play action a little bit better. Um, I'm a big fan of, you know, early on, just getting a hitch route or a slant or, you know, just completions, um, I think, are big. Um, I mean, the other thing that, that is tough on the road that you can do at home is mixing up the snap count. Um, and, and you just can't do that uh, when, you, you know, when you're playing in the swamp or some of these other environments. Um, so it makes it, it makes it really tough uh, offensively um, when they have a good pass rush going, uh, doing things that, uh, that can help offset that. Yeah, and I mean, I you know, you kind of feel for Steve Ensminger trying to call plays in that situation where it, you just, if your tackles can't win you the one-on-ones, it's going to be tough for any play car, caller to dial something up. Um, when, when you look at this loss, uh, Matt, do you think that was, was Florida just the better team? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you look at them, we had a chance to win that game, you know, I mean, we really did. Uh, so I don't think they're a better team, but I think they're a better team than people thought they were. Um, and so, and I think when the, when the, you know, as the season plays out, um, yeah, I think they're, they're they're a team that that's probably going to be in Atlanta, um, and so you know I don't think I think just LSU. Unfortunately, I think we're a good team. I think we have good players. I think Coach O's doing a great job. Uh, we just have a ridiculous schedule uh, right now, and so and I think there, there's some of it. You know, no matter what you want to say as a coach, it's hard when you're when you're playing Florida, but you have Georgia coming up, uh, and you know that's probably the bigger game. Um, it is tough to to sometimes uh, not not look at your your next opponent and who you're who you're playing. I'm talking to Matt Mock, former national championship winning quarterback here on Off the Bench, and uh, Matt Felipe Frank's quarterback for Florida did not have a great stat line, but I was very impressed with what Mullen w- was kind of dialing up at times. Whether it's that little fake read option option they ran three different times. Uh, what what did you see out of out of Dan Mullen from a play calling standpoint Saturday? Yeah, you're not allowed to say anything nice about him. Wasn't that the guy that uh, that flipped for us? Wasn't Frank supposed to come to LSU? Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're not allowed to say anything nice about him. Uh, I think Dan Mullen. I think that you know he was a, he was a great hire. Um, uh, he's a good coach. I think that uh, you know they. Uh, they do a great job of, of mixing things up. Uh, I mean, that throwback uh, was really well designed yeah. um, and nearly impossible. I mean, I, I, as a defense, how do you? I mean, that's that's pretty tough to stop. You know, just the way the when they called it and how it was done, um, and they executed it perfect. So I I was impressed. I thought I like I just told you. I think Florida. I mean, it, uh, they look good. I mean, they're they're a good team. Yeah, I think that that whole final drive, Florida's last touchdown drive, between that the option plays. The third and seven QB power that came out of nowhere. Like yeah. Mullen did a really that, that was just great play calling. Um, yeah. Okay, Matt. So uh, adjustments going forward. Then, w- what do you think the number one area that LSU needs to get fixed if they're going to challenge what looks to be like just three very tough games coming up? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to protect uh, Joe. I mean, I think that's the the first thing. I mean, 
you know, we talk about this every week that, you know, this is his whatever sixth start or seventh start, whatever it is. Uh, uh, and I know he's older and he's had some experience, but when you, when you go into environments like this, uh, you have to, have to, have to keep him as clean as possible. Um, because it's just, uh, from a QB standpoint, you don't mind getting hit, um, but it, it does take you off of your comfort and, uh, you know, you rep all week, all right, on my fifth step, I'm letting it go. Well, when on your fifth step, you have to slide to the right or the left or duck up. It just it just throws things off. Um, so I think the, the cleaner we can keep the pocket, the better uh, for him. And then uh, when we run the ball, it's, it's always, you know, a quarterback's best friend. Yeah, and and maybe you even just answered a bit right there, but but like I like take us into the quarterback's viewpoint where you know your tackles have been struggling all day long. You're getting beat up, and then at the end of the game, LSU was put into a lot of third and long situations. What's it like when you're in that very intimidating environment? It's very loud. It's third and long, and you know you got DNs who are whipping your tackles, just just like chomping at the bit to get after you. Yeah, well, and just from a you know defensive backs and uh, and linebackers, when when you're when you're you can get pressure with four. Uh, yeah. I mean, it just it makes you more aggressive. You know, I think that like the, that was a bad throw, the, the pick six. Uh, I mean, it really wasn't. But that corner knew, hey, we've been getting to this, we've been getting to the quarterback every single play. He's gonna have to get rid of this quick. Uh, and so I think they can just play as a defensive backs can play way more aggressive. Uh, when uh, when you're getting pressure on the quarterback. Last one, Matt. We'll get you out of here. You guys saw it up in Denver with Peyton Manning getting the record a couple of years back as the all-time passing leader in NFL history, pass, uh, passing up Brett Favre. Many anticipate Drew Brees to do that tonight on Monday Night Football. As a former quarterback, uh, being around the Denver Broncos uh, organization and seeing Peyton Manning accomplish that, talk a little bit about what uh, what Brees is going after this evening. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan. I uh, love the guy. I think he was an excellent quarterback and, uh, and did a great, you know, just can't say enough good things. But uh, I, I think this is a bigger accomplishment by Drew Brees um, just because he, he just he's basically done it on his own. You know, I mean, no one kind of gave him the keys and said, hey, here, you know, this is your, your deal, uh, which Peyton kind of had from day one. Uh, Drew Brees, to me, is – uh, is the epitome of a fighter, a guy that just won't quit, uh, and everything he's gotten, uh, you know, he's earned. Um, and and I'm I'm a huge, huge, huge fan. Uh, guys, maybe six feet tall, uh, and just I mean, to be the all-time passing leader is just a testament to um, to him, just not ever giving up and believing in himself, and uh, it's pretty impressive. Many will be reliving the memories from that 03 season when you guys hosted Georgia on that September afternoon in front of a raucous daytime crowd inside Tiger Stadium and hope that they can relive it this weekend. Thanks for the thoughts this morning, Matt, as always, man. All right, I always like talking to you guys. Thanks for having me on. Yep. All right, later, man.